when the oil comes out you don't want to get it on your glove so when you pop that out it's gonna be you got it on your glove hi guys i'm jen this is the first and only car i've ever owned and today i'm going to attempt to remove my oil pan pop out the pistons and replace the rings so let's preface this video first uh you were overheating quite a few times driving around quite a few times are you nervous on camera Alright, so uh, somehow I got suckered into doing a head gasket on this 2004 Civic and then she mentioned, hey, what about that uh, burning oil problem? I said, you know what, let's replace the piston rings and she will get a good opportunity to see what it's about working on cars. Alright, we're going to get her set up here and then let her go to town and we'll see how she makes out. We got the car up on jack stands with uh, safety blocks under there too with the tires just in case those jack stands fail. First, we're going to get the exhaust out of the way. We're going to drain the oil pan. We're going to take the bracket off, and then we're going to remove the bolts on the oil pan. Where are your gloves at? It's like an inchworm. So I have to get this rubber thing out of the way. All right, so you just pull that off, right? Don't let this exhaust hit you in the face though. I'll tell you what, you hold it up and I'll push this off with my finger. That's off. So here, take this bungee cord, hook this on something over there. This sucks. How's that? Great. Is that out of your way? Yeah. Beautiful. All right, attach the air gun. <laughs> ah, what the hell? You're pulling the trigger. <laughs> there we go. You gotta come on. You put that on before. I know I, you. Can. I have an air compressor, but it's not. It's not working the same. Oh. Can I get a pillow or something? If you need one. All right. Put put the gun on the end of this bolt, and tri trigger control. All right. Just give it a little zip with the with the trigger. One little zip. Go ahead again. Am I doing anything? Yeah. Take it off. Go ahead. All the way. It doesn't? No. Oh. Was that a 14? No. Oh, you got the socket on upside down. <laughs> <laughs> How do I get it off? You have to jam it off now. You jammed it on there. Oh my god. Give me this thing. Here. The square end goes on the air tool. This is just torture. Beautiful. Great. Now the front one. And bring the bracket down without hitting yourself in the face. Because you're not going to be happy if you break your tooth. Alright, there you go. Now when the oil comes out, you don't want to get it on your glove. So when you pop that out, it's going to be... You got it on your glove. All right, so that's mostly drained out. I'm gonna put the plug back in. All right. Great. Where'd it go? <laughs> I can't work like this. I I legit don't know how you get this back in this hole when it's all oily like this. Talk to the camera. Say what you're gonna do. I don't know what I'm gonna do. That's the square end. I had a mosquito bite me on my back. Now I'm gonna zip off all these oil pan bolts. Yep. It's horrifying. All right, now I'm gonna take these bolts off the oil pan. You're in a bad mood now, are you? How can we? Why can't it? I be in a bad mood? Nobody's enthusiastic about this. You want me to do it again? All right, now I'm gonna take these oil pan bolts off. <laughs> you seem really <laughs> excited. How do you honestly feel about the oil pan bolts? It's a lot harder than I thought it would be. Alright, so... Alright, now I'm taking off the oil pan bolt.
All right, now we're gonna rotate the engine so that the connecting rod bolts are a little bit more exposed. We can see one right there. There you go, we gotta take those off and then we can take the pistons off. I figure we'll bring the pistons, they're all midway down. Hopefully that exposes them good. Yeah, you got them <laughs> all running down your shoulder. Oh boy. All right, now I gotta get these connecting rod bolts off. And uh, seven more to go. We'll mark these pistons real quick. That's one, two, three, and four. So we don't get mixed up on those. Of course, I'll probably etch them once I take them out. To get these connecting rod caps off, I'll just take a punch and lightly tap up on the rod bolt to push the piston up and out of place a little bit. Boom, that's one and then work my way and do each one like that. We now have all of our rod caps off, along with the bearings uh, from the top too. So I'm gonna put these in a safe spot and obviously you don't wanna mix your bearings up or your rod caps. So in case anybody's curious, these rod bearings, you ever heard the term, oh, it spun a bearing or it threw a rod bearing. That's when, uh, if you get lack of lubrication in here and this bearing will actually spin and this little groove that keeps it locked in place uh, don't work no more. You can see these bearings are worn in some too. I'll probably just get a new set of bearings for this, honestly. Never a bad idea to replace them while you're in there, right? All right, now we push uh, number one piston up and Jen can grab it. Here she comes. Maybe. Oh, let me reposition. Hold on. Which way did it come out? All right, well, it doesn't matter because this says in right here, and that means the intake, so it came out that way. The oil control ring in here is all coked up and slugged up, and that's what really causes a lot of oil consumption on these engines. So we're going to get these cleaned up, get some new rings, and the pistons actually look pretty nice. Get right, babe. We'll just redo it. Here. And there's a quick look down into the cylinder walls. You can see they have some wear in them but not terrible cross hatch patterns st still there a little bit but just to show you how we'll do the cylinder you see i stuffed some paper towels down there to protect the connecting rod and then i got this ball hone so here's how that's going to look i'm going to put this on slow speed and i'll lube up my ball hone a little bit and then the idea when you do this is slow speed but up and down fast And let's see how that looks. And I gotta clean this out a little bit more, but you get the point. Just enough to break the glaze, get a nice cross hatch pattern on there. You can then give it a final wipe with uh, Liquid Ranch WD-40, or I highly recommend using Mystery Marvel oil, except I don't have any of that right now. So I'll just uh, spray this on here, and then she'll give it a good final wipe. It's convenient, because my hands actually won't even fit in these darn cylinders. If I try to go in, it's like, oh, nope, rejected. And see, even out that little bit of metal still came out, so we're going to give those a few more wipes. You want to make sure that they are spotless. How are you making out? Good. It's tedious. I already wire wheeled the tops of these pistons, got them pretty clean, but um, she's, she's getting them nice and clean in those grooves because the grooves were completely uh, sludged up, so she's getting there. You don't have to get ultra crazy cleaning everything underneath. I mean, of course you could use a sandblaster doing this, but I don't have one of those. So she's just using this pick and using the old rings to clean them. But it's very important that you get these grooves clean so that uh, that crud back there is not jamming up these piston rings. The piston rings have to float in the uh, lands, ring lands, so that they do their job properly. Keep going. All right, that's a wrap. <clears throat> Bring it in close. So not your face. Yeah, pretty much. Just touching on, <clears throat> just touch, just. <laughs> it's like. <laughs>
Just touching on the oil consumption issue here, clogged up or coked up or sludged up oil control rings are what causes oil consumption on these oil consumption on these Hondas. Now your top rings build in the compression and the second ring known as that oil scraper ring is what actually scrapes the oil off the cylinder wall when it's coming back down and prevents it from entering the combustion chamber above. But if this oil control ring is all sludged up, coked up like it was, it was just solid, then that oil that the scraper ring, middle ring, is scraping off the walls really has nowhere to go, right? So then it gets stuck in there and then makes its way into the combustion chamber and causes oil consumption. Now I'm gonna replace the intake gasket. Here we are next day again. Gonna get some more work done. We got our NPR rings in. These are OEM made in Japan Nippon piston rings, factory set. So she's gonna check the ring end gaps in these. The spec for the top ring is six to 12 thousandths. Second ring is 12 thousandths to 18 thousandths. And the oil control ring is eight thousandths to 28 thousandths. And those rods, when we put them back in, are gonna get torqued to 24 foot pounds. Ended up grabbing some of this Marvel Mystery Oil too, and she's gonna finish cleaning the cylinders out with that. And I'm gonna install the crank seal, so let's get to work. On the top compression rings, you will always put them in so the end is facing up on the piston. Those are directional. On the oil control rings, it doesn't matter which way they go in. Obviously, each piston is gonna take two oil control rings along with the, the wave ring in between them. She is going to now check the ring end gap, and just to give you a an idea of what that's about you take the ring that you're going in and really this is best to be checked at three points in a cylinder bore you check it up top in the middle and on the bottom but uh, we're not going to do that in this we're going to just make sure that these are within spec uh, so when i say ring end gap i'm talking about this gap and see how this ring's kind of sitting in there cattywampus right now well you take any a piston it doesn't matter which one just push that down so that the ring is sitting in there flush now and even and so that ring end gap is very important because if it's too tight then as the engine heats up the ring ends can butt from thermal expansion of the steel and they can scratch the cylinder walls so while these will probably all be in spec you always 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 check and make sure they are in spec if they're too big uh, too too big of a gap then well then you might need to bore your engine out and that's a whole nother video but all she's going to do is take a 16 thousandths we know it needs to be between eight and 28 thousandths on this oil control ring and you never slide this feeler gauge in going like this you always put it in and then run it horizontally along the ring okay the 16 thousandths snapped in you pull it straight out never pull it up like that otherwise you're gonna shift the ring and then i'm gonna use my 28 thousandths same thing boom that one won't fit in so i don't care about what the exact spec is i know this is good to go and this is going to go on piston number four that's what she's gonna do right now. When you put these oil control rings on, you put the wave in first and the two ends butt right up against each other. They don't overlap. And then you put the two rings on. This box shows a good diagram of the oil control ring. So you want the ends butting, not overlapping like that. That would be incorrect. So we've got all the rings on now, except for this top one. And that's just what they're supposed to look like. Now these ring end gaps have to be staggered. So if you have one here, the one under it should be staggered about 45, maybe 90 degrees. You just wanna make sure that you don't have two gaps over top of each other, cause that's gonna allow compression and oil to escape out. And like I said, that end faces up. So when you're putting these on, this ductile iron ring is very fragile and you can break it very easily but you can use a tool like this to put the rings on a uh, piston ring tool and that spreads them out but i find if you're just careful um, you can go ahead and put them on by hand you just want to make sure that the ends don't uh, scratch the sides of the piston head I put them on like so lift those ends over and boom good to go the next, our last most important step is making sure that all of the rings on every piston rotate and slide freely amongst the piston. Make sure there's no burrs in there or anything catching them. And of course, we're gonna lubricate these up real good before we put them in, but ready to go.
we've got the connecting rod journals cleaned up made sure no sand or dust is on them of course and this really is a great example of how a piston type engine takes the reciprocating motion of pistons and turns them into rotational energy like that so you can see that's the crankshaft spinning there and these are your main bearings now, let's drop these pistons in now and get the rod caps back on we've decided to reuse the original rod bearings since they didn't have any problems and they only have 140,000 miles on them plus the ones i ordered at autozone ended up being made in taiwan so i feel a lot more comfortable putting these factory ones that are already mated to that crankshaft in it's very important when you're putting these connecting rods together that the mating surfaces are completely clean with a lint-free cloth really is what you're supposed to do and that when you put these on you'll see they each have a number on them they actually all say number three but these rod caps have to go on in the exact same uh, fashion they came off cannot stress that enough i'm going to put a dab of this ultra slick assembly lube on each rod bearing too just a little dab will do you and then rub that in and of course before we put these pistons in you want to put some uh, clean motor oil onto the, the rings. This thing's not coming out, there it comes. Put some clean motor oil on there and then work your rings, work that into the rings and on the sides of the pistons. Make sure that's nice and lubed up. In is gonna go toward the intake and the arrow is gonna be going toward the front side of the engine, the timing belt side. You can grab it by the rings now. It's got to go in perfectly flush as it goes in. You don't push it in. It should slide straight down. Now is it jamming up? There it goes. So once the piston's down to that point, we're now going to put a ring compressor on here to compress these rings. I've cleaned out this piston ring compressor, made sure it's spotless. You're going to put that flush over the top and then quite simply, crank these down so that it evenly pushes all your piston rings in. You gotta make sure to push down on it hard so they don't slide at, at all. Once they're snug, give it a little tap. Let's hope that rod bearing don't fall off the bottom. It did, that's okay. We'll clean that up, make it put back, make it good though. But now that's one piston installed. So now we gotta install the rest. We're gonna do these rod bearings one at a time. So she's, she's putting the, the number four on. Oh, what? No, all right. So, so check this out. Since I pushed the piston, that rod bearing actually rotated a little bit. I gotta get in there with a screwdriver and push that back up flush. All right, that bearing is spun back to position. Beautiful, that's all the way up now. And we're gonna put the nuts on and torque them down. That's one down, three more to go. Got the pistons all cleaned up with the fresh ring set. Nice hone job. This thing should not be burning any oil anymore. Jen, one of these pistons you put in, the arrow's going the wrong way. Are you kidding me? Shut up. Yeah, we're gonna have to take it back out. You're kidding. Come look. No way. Yeah. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> we got the head back from the machine shop. This is actually a remanufactured head. Put the studs in, put the cam in, lube that all up. Set the valve clearance exhaust is at uh, 10 thousandths, intake at 8 thousandths. And I've cleaned both the cylinder head and uh, surface on the block with acetone, so nice and clean. New valves, new seals, well, they're actually remanufactured valves, but nice, nice valve job in there. Perfectly flat. And moving over to the engine, we, as I think I've showed you, we decked the block using the machinist block and sandpaper. I ended up buying one of these, uh, it's the machinist straight edge off of Amazon. Great piece to have, because I wasn't too sure about my ruler. So with this on the block, zero light shines through there and I can't even slip a 1,000th uh, feeler gauge. So the, the block is cleaned and prepped, ready to bolt this baby back together. Drop our dowel pins into the block, head gaskets nice, fresh and clean. Make sure you put that in the proper orientation so that all the holes line up. Set that on the block and yeah, she looks good. You can go ahead and toss your head on there. Making sure to line it up with the dowel pins. Hopefully she goes on good, right? Boom, beautiful. Looks tight. Got a light coating of motor oil on the 
head bolt threads. These are brand new head bolts. Drop those all into place. Get those hands started on there. And now the three-step torque process. 14 foot-pounds on the first round. Thirty-six foot-pounds on a second round. Of course, making to making sure to use the proper pattern that I showed you. I think earlier in the video, but uh, staggering them. And finally, forty-nine foot-pounds to top her off. Once you've done that, I always like to go one more round on it and make sure they're tight. That's it, head's torqued. So this is one of the downsides of a remanufactured head. This is like a broken off bolt or something in the bottom of it for one of these valve cover bolts. So I'm only getting like four or five threads out of that. I tried using that hole, but we're, we had to heli coil it. So I, I drilled it out to a quarter inch and then ran this heli coil tap. And basically this is a steel thread insert that I'm gonna put in there. We now have steel threads inside of this aluminum cap. Just clean up the rest of these couple shavings we've got around and uh, it'll be good. <laughs> okay, just finished up the rest of this after work today and we are ready to do the first start. I'm gonna let Jen do the honors. We did make sure to put oil in it, coolant in it. It's got the new oil filter on it, drain plugs tight. Those are some of the big things that you gotta check for. All the connections are on. And might make a little tick tick since it's new top end and everything. But yeah, fire it up. Bring the RPM up a little bit, a little bit. Beautiful. Couple little ticks in there. That's completely normal till the oil flows to the top end. And now I'm gonna go ahead and break this motor in. What do you think? I'm really happy. She runs good, right? How about all that smoke? She's on fire, right? <laughs> Alrighty. Well, that's a successful job. We'll go ahead and bleed all the uh, air out of the cooling system. This is a great piece to have. If you haven't used one of these before, check them out. It's called the Funnel Buddy. No, it's not the Funnel Buddy. I forget, I'll plug a link to it down below. It's made by Lyle. That's the Honda. That's a successful job and she's got a fresh top end. And uh, yeah, hopefully you liked the video. Drop it a thumbs up if you did, like usual. Comment below, give me some feedback or ideas for future videos. Until next time, this is Chris Brown here. No nonsense, no how. And that's how you work on a Honda Civic with the help of Jen.